Okay, good evening, everyone. And I uh, hope you all are having a good, uh, beautiful spring day. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Andrew Dolby. I'm a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences. And I've been here for about 21 years. Uh, I'm on what you could say the Discovery Channel end of the biological sciences. So I teach courses uh, such as ecology and evolution, animal behavior, uh, run some courses with a study abroad uh, component, like a course on the Galapagos Islands with a trip to the Galapagos Islands and tropical ecology. So that's sort of uh, my end of biology. Then I'll let uh, Nathan, one of our uh, students, introduce himself. And then I'll just give a brief overview of our programs to refresh your all's uh, memory uh, about what we have to offer. And then Nathan and I will kind of tag team it from there and uh, answer your questions. So uh, Nathan. Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Mitchell. Um, I'm currently a senior. I'm going to be graduating this May and I am a biology and Spanish double major. Uh, I came to Mary Washington knowing that I wanted to um, do biology because I've, I've wanted to be a veterinarian since I was little. And um, I actually just got accepted to veterinary school. So that's why I'll be, I'll be attending uh, Virginia Tech um, this fall after graduating. Hey, thank you, Nathan. And before I proceed, I just wanted to inform everyone that, uh, yes, we are recording this session, just so you're aware. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind uh, as you, you know, ask questions and comment and so forth. Uh, so let me just start with a, just an overview get again of uh, the programs that we have to offer. And then we will sort of um, take it from there, answer questions, and I'll let uh, Nathan speak uh, some more about his experiences. So I'm just going to share my screen and bring up that uh, presentation. So hopefully you can all see that. We can just get a thumbs up here and there. Okay, cool. All right. So just some quick statistics about our program. Again, we have about 15 full-time faculty covering a wide range of disciplines from molecules and cells all the way to the Galapagos Islands, which is uh, sort of my end of biology. At any given time, we have about 300 majors. Uh, that fluctuates a little bit, but it's about 300. Uh, we actually have three major programs, and I'll give you a quick overview of those, three major programs to choose from. And one benefit of coming to a school like UMW, a smaller school, is that you get the same faculty for your classes and the laboratories that go with them. Um, your larger universities have teaching assistants assigned to the labs. Yes, they can be very good teachers, uh, but uh, there's so often a disconnect between the professor teaching the course and the experience that you get in lab. But here it's all integrated. Lab is a great time to interact more with your professor, get to know them, uh, seek help, get that more intensive attention from the same person uh, who's also teaching the lecture. Uh, so the Jefferson Science Center, I just want to talk about that again. Uh, just in the past couple of years, uh, we have opened this new addition and we've also renovated uh, the, exi the existing space. So we increased the capacity by about uh, 30 to 35%. So this is the main lobby area in uh, Jepson. Uh, proceeding from the original building into the new wing. Uh, our new classrooms uh, are wired with a lot of technology, a lot of group collaboration now is possible. Um, we can beam in uh, guest speakers and so forth. A lot of flexibility with the seating, move around and uh, interact with each other during class. Uh, we've renovated our labs in the original space. So this is actually a biology lab. This was once carved up into some smaller lab rooms, and now we've made it all one big collaborative space with windows. Um, scientists and students work to get or work best when they're working together and can interact with each other. So different groups of students have different bays, and then there's a lot of shared equipment that everybody needs, like centrifuges and scales and freezers and so forth. Really nice uh, convenient space that's conducive for uh, doing good science. Uh, just the corridor in the uh, in the new space. Yeah, really nice uh, architecture, very modern. And some nice um, gathering spaces. Uh, 
now the chairs are kind of pushed over into the corners because of COVID. But in the fall, we expect to um, be back to normal with our ability to interact with each other. So these make some really nice places to study together, uh, just hang out between classes, um, maybe study after the end of the day uh, when your uh, classes are over. But we have a lot more of these interaction spaces now in the building, which is really great for students. So let me talk more about our three majors then. Um, we have one in biomedical sciences, which prepares students for uh, health-related careers. One in conservation biology. Let's say you want to become a wildlife biologist or work for a conservation biology nonprofit. Uh, this would be the uh, major for you. And then the biology major is broader, and it would pre prepare you for a wide variety of different um, career tracks. Uh, maybe you're not sure yet which one you want to go into. That's another possibility. Um, some students who want to go to vet school, like Nathan, may want to stick with the biology major because that, again, gives them a, a broader perspective of uh, biology, which would make them good candidates for that kind of a program. Uh, then we also have a biology minor, and uh, we contribute to a couple of additional minors, neuroscience and environmental uh, sustainability. So uh, some students, let's say, want to get into Alzheimer's research or they want to um, study or work with brain injury patients. Uh, they might then minor in neuroscience. We share that with the Department of Psychology and same for environmental sustainability uh, that would bridge the gap between biology and environmental science. So a bit more about the biological sciences major. Uh, here are the required courses, cell biology, human physiology, because uh, it all traces back to how the human body works, no matter what uh, health related career you want to get into. And then we have a wide variety of electives to choose from in anatomy, various physiology courses like endocrinology, uh, immunology, all the ologies essentially relating to the human body. And of course, microbiology, uh, which would give students, which gives students background in um, in microbial uh, infectious disease, antibiotics. Uh, we also have a virology class uh, in addition to microbiology. And then a societal perspectives course. Uh, this kind of rounds out the student in terms of understanding uh, health related uh, issues a bit more, not just the biology behind the um, behind disease and so forth, but uh, but sociological issues, access to health care, the medical ethics. Medical ethics is a really popular course to take outside the biology discipline. So that kind of rounds you out there. And obviously, it leads to careers such as medicine and dentistry. We have a, a well-established uh, sort of infrastructure for supporting students who are interested in uh, medical school or dental, dental school with an advisor dedicated to that, for example. Uh, many of our students go on to physical therapy school. They become physicians, assistants, pharmacists, uh, various nursing specialties. Uh, I, re I can recall one student, for example, who became a nurse anesthetist, which is a really excellent career. Uh, she's very successful now in that career. And, you know, many other allied health professions. Uh, in including the ones I just listed. Um, it would also pave the way to laboratory work. Uh, some students want to work, let's say, for a medical testing laboratory. This would also be uh, an appropriate major uh, for them. Then we have to also draw attention to the fact that uh, we're right across the street from the area's largest uh, medical complex. There's a huge medical complex within walking distance from UMW. It's right across the road. Uh, it includes uh, the Mary Washington Hospital, uh, an image, a big imaging, medical imaging facility, lots of doctor's offices, physical therapy offices, a free community clinic. Uh, and so our students can walk right across the road and do uh, clinical hours, volunteer work, internships. Uh, they are well accustomed to um, Mary Washington students coming their way uh, over there. So we're well well-established uh, for that. Uh, many of our students also participate in sort of extracurricular programs like the medical brigades. 
this is one of our students down in Panama uh, participating in a medical brigade uh, activity. Um, and if our if students do well on our program, um, yes, they're very successful at entering a medical school. So we place them uh, all over, generally up and down the East Coast within Virginia. And the same applies to vet school. Vet school is very difficult get, to get into. Um, and it requires uh, a lot of, you know, broad, uh, broad training in biology, uh, in addition to what maybe medical students would uh, prepare for. Uh, then the conservation biology, this, this would be geared more towards students who are interested in ecology, uh, ma uh, maintenance of biological diversity. So you take courses in those areas. We have various specialized courses in ecology. And then we have uh, courses that cover different groups of plants and animals. I teach an ornithology class, for example, a course on birds that a lot of conservation biology majors take. Uh, we have vertebrate zoology, invertebrate zoology, uh, entomology. Uh, and then we also ask that they take a course in some sort of uh, policy uh, related uh, discipline, such as environmental science, learn about what the Endangered Species Act is. Um, there are various uh, environmental ethics courses, again, the sociology, economics of conservation. Uh, offered by other disciplines. Uh, we also, with that, require a GIS class since that's so important to conservation biology. Being able to map habitat and so forth is really important and a really uh, excellent job skill um, that employers are looking for. So the conservation biology major would uh, would lead to careers like this. Again, any kind of wildlife management with the federal government or the state, or maybe a private organization. Um, genetics is a really important discipline to get into. Also, if you're interested in genetics, you can put that together with, you, with your interest in conservation biology. Uh, we have lots of nonprofits in the area uh, that hire and that also provide internship uh, opportunities like the Rainforest Trust, uh, the Nature Conservancy, the National Zoo. And we have a partnership with the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation. They have a conservation biology program at the Smithsonian's Front Royal uh, Endangered Species uh, Research Facility where they actually raise animals that they plan to release into the wild or to further study. Uh, so they have cheetahs and main wolves and um, oryx and all kinds of interesting uh, species there. We have two students who are already in the program. And so they're kind of getting the best of both worlds. They take their classes here, uh, most of them that is. And then if they participate in the Smithsonian Mason program, they get an intensive semester working with world class conservation biologists, people who are world renowned. Um, and then they can you know, learn obviously a lot of skills outside the classroom also on the grounds up there, like radio tracking, um, learn about all the dietary needs and reproductive needs of uh, endangered species that uh, you know, need to be bred in captivity for re-release. Uh, so you, you would have the opportunity to work with a species like the clouded leopard, um, and find out more about uh, their captive breeding program through this, uh, this sort of residential one semester program. And then the credits transfer back to UMW. So it's like you're taking a, a semester almost abroad, um, but you know you don't go too far, you're in Front Royal. But if you're from around here, uh, you tend to take the Smithsonian maybe for granted, but to the rest of the world, uh, this is an amazing uh, opportunity. Uh, then our program also offers uh, research, a lot of research opportunities, and that's what really sets you apart when it comes time to uh, apply to vet school, medical school, or uh, other high-level program. So we have classes that we call research intensive, where you do a, a science, semi-independent science project. Uh, we have lots of individual research opportunities. The Summer Science Institute is a great opportunity uh, you can earn a stipend and have a 10-week intensive research experience with 
usually another student and then a faculty member who's leading the research under the umbrella of their research program. Um, and that often is a springboard to further research the following year. Um, that's where you get some great experience. Uh, we also have an honors program and you can earn departmental honors through one of these research projects. Uh, and again, that's how you really set yourself apart uh, when you're applying after UMW to, to programs or jobs. You know, they want to know if you can manage your own work, whether you can troubleshoot, um, you know, whether you can be creative in your thinking, independent in your thinking uh, beyond the classroom and really apply what you've learned in the classroom. So that's the value of doing research. So we have lots of laboratory-based research and field-based research uh, that you can uh, get into depending on what your interests are. And that often leads to conference presentations. Um, this is a student presenting a paper at um, a uh, Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology meeting. And I believe this was in Texas this year, but a uh, really great uh, research project on uh, the effect of various genes on development of uh, fish, which serve as models for medical research. And as I said, as I alluded to before, we also have some uh, study abroad programs, classes that include a spring break trip somewhere like Panama. Uh, Panama is an amazing country. So in that, on that trip, you see cloud forest, rainforest. Um, you get to snorkel in both the Pacific and the Caribbean. Um, see all kinds of wildlife. Uh, we stay at a facility that's right down the street from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. So we also usually see some scientific presentations and uh, sit in on a bat mist netting program and um, check out the bats, you know, that they're researching. Really amazing trip. And then we also run one to the uh, Galapagos Islands. Uh, which again has a lot of great encounters with wildlife, lots of amazing scenery. Um, you also engage in a service project. That's another really great experience. Yeah, and the wildlife just, they have no fear. So <laughs> the sea lions, you know, you got to step around them. Um, they just um, own the place. Blue-footed boobies, all the iconic Galapagos Island species. Sea turtles. Uh, last time we went, the students were in the water with penguins, snorkeling with Galapagos penguins, including this student right here who went on the last uh, Galapagos trip. He may look familiar. Um, and so I'll kind of turn it over to him now to talk about uh, his experiences here at uh, UMW so far. Thank you. I wasn't as surprised to see that picture this time because I've already seen this once. So <laughs> last time I was a bit more shocked. <laughs> um, but so yeah, I was a part of the, the Galapagos trip that I took uh, with Dr. Dolby. Um, for that trip, you actually have to take a, a class. It's Ecology in the Galapagos. So um, for the first part of that semester, you're just learning about the Galapagos, um, the wildlife, the, the, I mean, like the people, the, the food, like you learn about everything that, that you're gonna see there. And then um, you, essentially for, for a week, then you go to the Galapagos and you actually get to experience everything that you've been learning about for the past two or three months, which is really cool because I've taken lots of different classes uh, where you learn lots of interesting things, but you don't actually get to see that in person. Um, so like you mentioned, I actually got to swim with the Galapagos penguins and sea turtles, and I even got bit by a sea lion, but it wasn't that bad. And it was, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, but I've also taken another study abroad trip. I took one to Spain as well. So there are lots of different um, experience, like opportunities and you get tons of experience um, with, with traveling if, 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 if you really want to. Uh, you learn a lot from that as well. Um, but back actually on campus, uh, there, there are tons of opportunities as well as far as research and connecting with the professors because uh, the classes are a lot smaller. That's one of the things that I really didn't even realize was a a thing until I um, visited some of my friends at larger schools and realized some of their classes had two or 300 kids. And uh, I think the largest class that I've ever had at Mary Washington was between 50 and 60. And that was like a general general chemistry class. So you, you tend to expect that, but the smallest I've had has been up to six or seven. Like I've had classes of just six or seven people. Um, and I'd say that's it's a pretty common thing to have a small class size because then you really get to not only connect with a professor, you get to know um, the other students. And I find it a lot easier to learn. Um, but yeah, I'd, 
as far as that and then uh, research as well. I have I've done a lot of research with Dr. Dolby personally. Um, it's it's a lot easier to find research opportunities as well at this school because I feel like at, at larger schools there are a lot more students competing for that. Um, but here it's a matter of whether or not you really just want to research. So you what you do is you think of an idea or something that you um, believes would be interesting or beneficial and you look at uh, the different faculty members in the, the science, the science uh, department and because each, each one lists uh, their specific research interests. So you essentially find whichever professor has um, the same sort of interest in you uh, and then you just go up to them and you start to, to talk and if they're up for it then you can start research. So it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot easier to, um, to, to find opportunities at this school, both with study abroad, with classes and like I just mentioned with research and all those things really come together when you're looking at applying to grad schools and looking for jobs because nowadays everybody has a degree, but they're, what they're really looking for is experiences like this and different things that make you unique. And I found that um, there's really no limit to these sort of uh, experiences and these, these sort of things that you need at UMW. Oh, nice. And so, so then I'll just kind of close this overview uh, with this, these kind of points here, and then then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, so yeah, why biology UMW? Uh, we're small, but we do have a wide variety of courses in several different programs, uh, depending on what your interests are. So we can meet any student's interests or career or professional goals. Uh, and with that, though, you get small classes, lots of attention same professor for both lecture and lab, which is uh, really important. Uh, I have found that uh, I can also, because I've been a TA at a big university, I, I got my PhD at uh, Ohio State, so I was one of those TAs. And uh, I find that, uh, you know, of course, now I have a lot more experience at providing, let's say, feedback for student work. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I would rather get feedback from the professor I am now than from the TA, TA I was then. <laughs> so, and I can meet each student's needs. I can um, be very specific about the feedback I provide and so forth. So, um, and obviously get to know everybody between those two uh, sort of class formats, lab and, and lecture. Um, we have lots of research and travel opportunities and we just have a close supportive community. Um, we know each other. And so that really helps when we're, we're trying to get through a difficult time like we had this past year. Um, it really made a big difference to be part of this close community when we had a really tough challenging year for everybody. And we got through very well compared to other institutions. And finally, this most importantly, our, our graduates are successful. So if you come to UMW, you do well, you take advantage of your opportunities, um, you're going to compete with the best from anywhere. When Nathan goes off to vet school in the fall at Virginia Tech, um, he's going to be there with students from, I guess you could say, other schools with a lot more name recognition. Um, but he's going to be right in there with him, and he's going to have the same skills, if not better, um, than they they are bringing their uh, they are bringing with them to Virginia Tech. Uh, given you know the experience he's had here and so that's another good selling point obviously is that um, you come here you will compete with the best from anywhere so with that just wanted to um, open it up for uh, questions I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and um, let's go to the chat box here um, do you have any ideas for a student who is passionate about biology and computer science um, yes, I do know some students who've been really interested in computer science. Um, we have a great computer science department. And uh, what I would recommend is, um, is majoring in one or the other. You could also double major. That's also something you can do at UMW is double major. You can major in both and uh, put together a joint project where you apply your uh, computer science skills to solving a biological problem. Uh, we have a bioinformatics course, for example. And so you might 
be able to identify a project uh, through that, uh, some kind of project that involves biological data mining, um, proteins, nucleic acids, DNA sequences um, to solve problems in uh, taxonomy or looking for um, you know, antibiotics, you know, whatever the, whatever the question is. Uh, so yeah, I, and I've known students who have double majored in computer science and biology and, and they did quite well. Okay, any other questions? You can either unmute and ask, uh, and ask in person or you can type your question in the, in the chat window. Yes, for the pre-med program, uh, can you also do research? Uh, yes, absolutely. So pre-med is, um, that's basically a, more of a university-wide program. Um, uh, pre-med students, they might major in biology, but they might also major in chemistry or physics. Um, uh, biochemistry is another major uh, students can choose from and, and be a, a pre-med student. So the pre-med program is kind of umbrella and beyond your academic major. And so if let's say you choose a biomedical sciences major, um, you would have all the same opportunities as any other biomedical sciences major, including uh, access to uh, research that professors are doing and, and become involved with that. Um, usually our successful medical uh, school applicants have done research with a professor, uh, including um, the Summer Science Institute. Uh, some of them earn honors in biology and then, yeah, that makes them really good, um, strong candidates for medical school. Uh, yes, right now, yes, there are COVID restrictions in the lab, um, but we really expect those to um, not be as stringent in the fall. Uh, I think at most schools, probably students will still be wearing masks a lot, you know, when they're in group settings. Um, but for example, the uh, room capacities, I think, should be back to normal. So you'll be able to work um, at full capacity in the labs. You'll be able to uh, work in groups again, I think, more extensively. Uh, so all that should be almost almost back to normal. 90% uh, of our classes, again, are going to be face-to-face uh, -face in the fall. So, uh, you know, I think most schools are, have, are being a little cautious about fall, um, but we expect 90, 95% normalcy uh, in the fall, yeah. Um, and it's paid off, and our community has stayed healthy. Uh, our COVID cases have been minimal and it's come at a cost, you know, um, and, but we're really proud of our students uh, who've been so disciplined and so dedicated uh, to making sure everyone's safe. And um, it just is a testament to who they are. Uh, UMW students are just fundamentally just good people, you know, and they care about their uh, communities. So it's one reason why we came through so well. So biochemistry, uh, there's a question about what biochemistry is. Um, biochemistry is a major offered by the chemistry department. Um, it does include a couple of biology courses, um, but it's also kind of chemistry heavy, organic chemistry, obviously the biochemistry sequence uh, in that department, physical chemistry you also have to take. Uh, but it's really chemistry applied to essentially proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, Carbohydrates, you know, the, the chemistry that uh, makes up life and how all those biological molecules interact with each other. Um, and then some of the chemical bases for fundamental cellular processes like cellular respiration, you know, at the chemical level, you know, you get into in biochemistry. Um, and then, yes, there's an official pre-med club. Uh, Yes, and then there's a question about some kind of research. Yes, uh, right, and we have faculty who do um, research in different areas that are um, 
that are like Breaking Bad <laughs> that are uh, that are relevant to medical school. Like we have one professor who studies um, this group of organisms called AP complexins, and maybe you've never heard of them um, referred to by their scientific kind of group like that. Uh, but importantly, it includes the parasite that causes malaria. So that's her research expertise area. And she's sponsoring a couple of research students right now um, who are doing some really high level research. And I believe one of them is a, uh, is a pre-med student um, getting some excellent skills, plus learning about uh, one of arguably, arguably one of the most important uh, infectious diseases in the world. Yeah, and like I said, research is, yeah, that's, that's really important because um, uh, they want to see what sets you apart. And then if you do a good job, the professor can then say really specific things about you in their letters of recommendation. And that means a lot. Um, at a bigger school, you might get more of a generic letter. Uh, but here, we know you. And that comes through in our letters. And they that carries more weight when you can say things that are so specific about what this student will bring to medical school and their prospects for a success in medical school. We can also talk more about your personal attributes, you know, that would make you a, a successful physician or a veterinarian. You know, it takes more than just uh, being book smart, right? You gotta be people smart. Um, you have to have good interpersonal skills and. Um, and uh, be comforting to people who are in pain, whether they're a, a person with a medical problem or a pet owner whose pet is in distress, you gotta be able to work with people. And I can say that about Nathan, that he will be an excellent uh, people person in addition to working with those uh, animals and uh, treating them medically. Okay, what else can I uh, answer for you? And we also have a, a career and professional studies office, uh, which can help guide you toward uh, careers and help you look for jobs and internships when you start getting close uh, to graduation. Um, it's never too early to start thinking about that. Uh, even your first year, uh, once you identify what you want to major in, it's never too early to start thinking about what, what kind of life you want to have after Mary Washington uh, do I want to work in a lab? Do I want to work in a clinical setting with people? Do I want to be out in the field uh, counting birds or, um, you know, measuring uh, plant primary productivity as uh, some part of an ecological project or for uh, an environmental consulting firm, uh, whatever it is. Any other questions? Okay, uh, as a freshman, what kind of classes to take for a general info seeking experience? Um, well, maybe uh, I'll give Nathan a chance to talk a little bit about that um, since I've been doing a lot of the talking. So Nathan, what did you take your freshman year? And maybe you could talk about your, fr your freshman seminar experience also. Right, absolutely. Um, so you have to take uh, a seminar at the beginning that's just required of all the freshmen. Um, that can be a bit, a bit random. I, mine was on like road trips around the world. I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what to choose at first, but it's sort of just to get you, um, thrown into a, a sort of area to see if you like it or not. And apart from that, you also get, uh, you have to complete a certain number of, of general, like gen ed, they're called gen eds. Um, so lots of arts and English and stuff like that. So I had to take, um, a bunch of different classes that maybe I'd, didn't really want to be because I, I knew that I wanted to be in biology, um, but it does help for students who aren't really sure what they want to do because that gives them, it sort of samples them in every sort of major area. Um, I never had to take any business or computer science classes, but um, I'd say those are the only real two fields that I didn't get into. I had to take a class in at least, or at least one class in every other area. Um, so for a general information seeking experience, you basically get it whether you like it or not because they make you take 
all these uh, general education classes, but that is to to sort of show you um, at least what you might be missing if you if it's something you've never taken before. And the, uh, the general ed program also has um, the, a writing and speaking component, uh, which is really important. Uh, those are skills that uh, everybody needs, regardless of what career path they get into. If you're a good writer, you can give a good presentation, know how to research a topic and then present it. Uh, yeah, that will really set you apart. So we have good um, skill building classes for that and centers you know, that are dedicated to to helping you be better writers and speakers. So that's another really important part of that uh, general education program. Um, I would say the other best trip to take, uh, if you don't do the uh, Galapagos Islands trip or the trip to Panama, is um, a trip to South Africa offered by uh, Earth and Environmental Sciences. There's a course called uh, Sustainability in South Africa. Uh, and it's a bit broader. Um, you learn more about other sustainable issues, state sustainability issues other than just uh, sort of wildlife and ecology. But it does include a safari, at least uh, at least one. There may be a couple of uh, safari type activities with that. So that would be another one that would be really good for a, for a biology major and definitely someone interested in conservation biology uh, specifically. Um, I, I don't think anyone, uh, I don't think there's a plan to make neuroscience a major. Um, so right now I think it, it will remain a, a minor for a while, but uh, we do have some great neuroscientists though who you can do independent research with and that would be a good way to uh, augment that minor and get more background there. Um, yes, yes, I would say the, there's a question about um, help for people who want to get into health or biology in the military. And uh, yes, we're well experienced with that. Um, we've had students go on and um, to the uniform services. Um, we're in a military heavy area. So we not only do we have students who are interested in the military, we have veterans in our classes. Um, so that is definitely part of the pre-med program um, to take advantage of those opportunities uh, offered by the military or for students who wanna serve, that both serve their, serve their country in and pursue a medical career at the same time. Uh, yes, we can definitely address that, accommodate that. Yeah, we do have students who take that path. In fact, uh, one of the students I, um, I showed, I showed you her picture earlier uh, in a lab coat. Um, yeah, she, I believe, um, entered the army. Yes, so she's um, completing her medical program through the army. I'm not, I'm personally not quite as sure how that works, but, uh, but yeah, she'll be a medical doctor for the army and um, serve them for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Yes, would it be great to reach out and connect? Who would it? Yeah. So internships for pre-med or bio. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we have different career advisors in our department. And so you can get to know who those people are. Um, and then we also have that university career and professional studies office. Uh, sorry, career and yeah, professional. Center for Career and Professional Development, sorry, yeah, um, whose job it is to find internships for students, um, help connect them with um, opportunities. So yeah, we're well equipped for any of that. And in fact, now it, it's so important to us that we've integrated uh, sort of career preparation more directly into our general education program. So now there's a career requirement called after Mary Washington, where you have to take a course in career preparation, or in some cases, maybe you can take, do an internship where you really get into and in, uh, to work with an employer and find out how the job works 
And you're basically like an employee. Some are paid, some aren't, but you really get a feel for that profession. Um, that would also satisfy that, uh, that requirement, that after Mary Washington requirement. Uh, marine biology, yeah. So, uh, so marine biology, a lot of students ask about that. And I would say, yes, conservation biology would be a good uh, major to take. Um, and we have a biology of fishes course. Uh, we have an invertebrate zoology course, which um, as you might know, most invertebrates are marine. And so, yeah, you get a big dose of that in that course. Um, and then also earth and environmental sciences, they have a great uh, new uh, paleoclimatologist, but she studies corals. And she offers a trip to Bonaire where you get to scuba dive and do research on uh, coral bleaching uh, over spring break. Um, so she's a fantastic resource and teaches a great oceanography course. And at Mary Washington, you can also design your own major. Um, it's called a special major. And you can put that together. You can combine courses from different disciplines. And you could probably design something yourself on uh, marine biology and, um, and uh, put together courses from dis different disciplines that way. Uh, let's see. Ed psychology major, minoring in neuroscience. So I would say uh, someone with that career path, like occupational therapy would be a good career path. Uh, again, people who, who have suffered brain injuries or uh, dementia and they need, um, need that kind of care. Um, as we know, in the coming couple of decades, uh, the incidence of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia is really going to increase. And so the employment opportunities for um, care facilities and so forth is really going to increase. Um, and as we know, there's a lot of interest in um, brain injury. Uh, so I would, I could see uh, either a medical specialty, you know, like a nurse or a physician's assistant who has a specialty in, um, in neurology. Um, or I could see uh, someone more on the social side uh, working for uh, a care, a memory, they call them memory care facilities, you know, they, where they would work with more of the, um, the therapy for people who uh, are, are in these facilities and um, need that kind of um, sort of me mental health therapy. That's the best I can answer, given that I'm not a psychologist, but uh, I am aware that uh, that those employment career pathways are are available and growing. That's the best I can answer on that. Yeah. My sister actually works with Alzheimer's patients. Okay, any other questions? We have time for maybe one more and then we'll have to let, uh, let everyone get set up for the next session. Okay, well, I will type my email address in the uh, chat window here and you all can feel free to um, send me an email at any time if you have any other uh, questions. And yeah, I wanna thank uh, Nathan again for joining us. Um, yeah, he's been a great student and great example of what you can do at UMW. So yeah, he's, he's off to vet school.